Welcome to Handy Tech Under 100 Episode 8, where just about anything can happen. As long as it happens for under $100. And also isn't lame. We never let anything lame on this show, which... Oh, you're gonna go there? You, you wanna go there? Alright, alright, that's it, I'll throw down. Here are three unassailable arguments for why socks and sandals are the world's most optimal footwear. One, it never... The Corsair HX 1200i power supply delivers 80 plus platinum efficiency for quiet, efficient power and Corsair Link Digital for advanced monitoring and control. Click now to learn more. Right about here. So our first handy item of the day is one that would have come in handy <laughs> uh, many times at the office when we've resorted to hanging cables out the sides of our systems, using the Frankenstein remains of ripped apart external hard drive enclosures, or crossing our fingers and hoping one of those USB to SATA adapters will manage to supply enough power to the drive we happen to be trying to read from. This is the Thermaltake Black X. I honestly have no idea how to pronounce it, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it the Black uh, the concept is simple, but quite frankly, most of the options on the market are just not very good, and my personal blocks has served me so well that we reached out to Thermaltake about equipping each of our editing stations with one of them for quick ingesting of footage shot directly to an SSD. We actually have a few cameras that do this, but the application of these bad boys goes way beyond pulling files off of cameras. They're great for troubleshooting borked PCs, so you can try to fix issues or pull important data off without a working OS. They're great for archiving data if you use hard drives, kind of like VHS tapes. And if you pay a bit extra for the duet, then it's even more flexible because you can use it as like a, you know, external drive enclosure with two mounts instead of one for your usual nightly backups or whatever else the case may be. Drive compatibility is a strong point for the Blex. With only our native 4K sector Seagate Enterprise drive stumping it. And if I had to complain about anything else, it would be that the dual drive one doesn't feature separate power switches for each bay. So adding or removing a single drive will momentarily disconnect the other bay, although I've yet to see a dock that handles this any differently. Item number two today is a totally fun one from Tech Keys, and it's actually kind of a variety of items we have here with a common theme. Ultra small, driverless, programmable keys for your PC or for your Mac. Now the original concept was kind of a unique PCB business card with a microcontroller on it where each of the keys spits out some information about the manufacturer when you press it. Then from there came the Tech Keys programmable card, which unlike the business card, and thanks to the 7x24 LED array built right into the board, can be easily reprogrammed by holding down program for two seconds, selecting the key you want to program, then using the arrow keys to select which characters you want. Cool, right? Not as cool as the Tetris game Easter egg that I'd be lying if I said I didn't waste a bunch of time tinkering with at my desk while I was supposed to be writing this review. Anyway, neither of those are really finished products intended for end users, although you can buy them along with cool keycaps on their site. Exposed PCBs are not a safety hazard with low amperage 5 volt power to them, but they're certainly not durable. So let's take a look at the one keyboard and the three keyboard that these earlier experiments inspired. The concept is simple. It's a sweet little aluminum housing from Nude CNC with a PCB mounted to the bottom that gives you either one or three fully programmable keys that can be used for anything your heart desires, from single inputs to frequently used passwords, not that I'd recommend that particular use, to Windows or program-specific shortcuts to long macro chains with modifiers like Control and Shift. Just hold down any one of the buttons for four seconds with a text editor like Notepad open on your computer and watch as the instructions for programming the device appear magically. Which leads us to the magical device that allowed us to take the following footage, walking up and down stairs with an iPhone. Check out how steady that looks. Isn't walking footage with phones usually total crap? How is he doing? Oh, all right, there's nothing magical. Oh. There's nothing magical about a gimbal, but this particular one is affordable 
easy to stuff in a bag, and just a downright cool little mobile accessory. It's called the Stable Cam, and it's about the size of a folded umbrella and works a little something like this. You slide your phone into the smaller or the larger of the surprisingly slip resistant slots, depending on your device's thickness. Then you decide if you want to film at body level or down low or up high. Then you hold the device horizontally by the grippy ring and pull the weighted end out until it balances. You put the whole thing upright and then you nudge your phone left or right until it pretty much holds still. Then holding it like this and supporting the bottom shaft with your little fingers, it is off to the races. The whole process does take a minute or two every time you want to balance it, but Considering the difference in the results, it's pretty safe to say it's worth the extra effort if you're into not having your phone video footage look like total rubbish. The footage you're looking at right now was actually shot on the Galaxy S6 Edge at 1080p 60fps, then that was slowed down to 30 for even better stability. Pretty cool, hey? So closing out this video, the last thing is the full disclosure part that I like to include with Handy Tech, the blacks. Actually, a number of them for a new office was provided by Thermaltake, but I already owned one that I'd picked up for myself a couple of years ago. And the stable cam and tech keys were both provided by the manufacturer without any obligation to review them if I didn't like them, but I did. So here they are. Guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment, preferably on our forum, which is linked in the video description if your feelings are more complicated than this. Also linked in the video description, you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. Give us a monthly contribution if you think what we're doing is awesome and you want to support it. Or just change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate codes. So whenever you buy any of this stuff on Amazon, not that all of it necessarily is available on Amazon, not really the point. Whenever you buy stuff on Amazon, we get a small kickback. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff.